Hey guys, and welcome to what is hopefully the first of several little brain tutorials. Um, I just want to start off first by saying a little disclaimer here that by making these, I do not in any way, shape, or form believe or think myself to be the world's bestest, greatest, most wonderful raw hide or, or breeder. Um, I, I, oh, hi Ruth. <laughs> Sit. Say hi. Hi. No, she doesn't want to say hi. That's fine. Um, I just have to look at my own work for a second, and I cringe, and I'm like, oh, it's full of mistakes, and it's awful, but I do know the basics, and I've been getting a whole bunch of requests on to make um, a couple little videos on how to get started, so that's what we're going to do, and because I have the internet and the filming stuff to do it, we're going to do it, so I hope you enjoy. Um, We're going to get started with our four braid, and I'm just starting out with kangaroo string. I cut four pieces of, I think they're about 32, 36 inches long. I don't know. I'm terrible on that. Um, but we're going to do some rawhide afterwards. But I like to start off with soft leather when you're learning because you can braid it, and then you can undo it. And this has been braided... I don't know, three or four times, and the strings are still, you can still use them. If it's rawhide and you do it, or what is something else? Even latigo kinks really easily. It's really hard to use the same piece of leather. Um, so I think kangaroo is super, super helpful to get started on. So I just tied my four strings in a knot up on top, put it in my clamp, and I think it's really important when you're getting started to just go ahead and try and keep your work super neat right off the bat. Learn how to hold your strings right off the bat. Um, it will feel weird at first and you will feel like your hands are enormous and your strings are everywhere and you don't even know how to pick your nose, let alone <laughs> braid your strings. But just stick with it and it'll get to feeling like totally normal, like an extension of you. I hold my strings with my strings over my fingers underneath. So that way I can see what I'm doing because I want everything to be on top. Um, braiding is basically a bunch of patterns. Over one, under one, over one, under one. Under two, over two, under two, over two. Um, and once you have that figured out, it just, it goes through for everything and it's a lot easier. So we're gonna start with two on each side um, and that's you're always going to have two on each side I call my outside strings my top strings and you'll see while we braid that um, there will always be a high string so I'm just going to get started here because it is difficult to see the pattern in the first little bit so well actually I guess you need to see You have your, so split, split, so you have two on each side, and you're going to cross your two, back up a little bit, there you go, you're going to cross your two middle ones. Doesn't matter which direction you go, but I always start with my left middle string over my right middle string. Do you see how it forms a X? Now this one is higher than this one, so I'm going to go under this string. Grab this top string, go underneath, so it's going under this one and over this one, and it's created a new X. And can you see how this top string here is higher than these other ones now? And see, I have my two on each side, keeping everything neat and organized. So because whichever one is the highest, whatever your top string is, that's the one that you have to, um, that's going to be like your, your main string, I guess. Uh, how would I say that? That's going to be the one you use next. So I hold my V there, with pinch them between my thumb and my uh, pointer finger just to kind of keep them out of the way. And I see that this is my top one, so I go under this one, grab, grab it here underneath, and it goes around behind and over this middle one. So now we have a new V and a new top string. Go under, 
over. You see that pattern there? This is my top string. So I'm going to go under this one and I and it comes around behind and make sure you keep your strings flat. They they can't twist or else it'll look really crappy. It goes over. And I'm braiding this really loose cuz I'm more concentrating more on talking than I am actually braiding. <laughs> So now I have my new V and I can hold it there and, and remember keep your sh strings over your fingers so that you can see better. And this is this top string is higher so that's the one I know that needs to go next. So I go ahead and go under this string, grab this one, it goes around behind and over which creates our new middle. Okay so this is your top string or your top string is higher than the others so you know that's the one that needs to be worked next so I go under this string grab my top string it comes around behind and over your middle string so you've created a new V or X whatever you want to call it do you see that the, how these two create a little X there and this one is your now your new working string so I go under and over under, over, and the over. Oh, I want to show you guys something. If you have to like sneeze or answer the door or go to the bathroom or the very important, um, pour yourself an extra cup of coffee and you just let it fall here, uh, you'll stand the chance to lose your place or cattle come along and destroy it or whatever. So. You see how uh, this side, your top string here, is higher, which means that's going to be the side that needs to work next. So what I do is if I'm going to go somewhere, I just grab it, your working side, and half hitch it around whatever I'm working with. And there we go. Okay, so you're in my messy bathroom and I've had some rawhide soaking, I threw it in the sink and I just wanted you guys to be able to see it because the first time you work with rawhide you're like, I don't know what to do if this is right so you throw it in there, you let it soak until it's wet like spaghetti you can see how I can bend it and everything and it's like it'll feel completely soaked if you check on it halfway, you'll, um, it'll feel wet but you won't be able to bend it very easily when you can bend it like this, then it's wet now, in my opinion. I don't know, I think some guys let, let it uh, only soak through halfway and then they just start braiding with it, but I do it this way. So we're gonna hang it up in the sun. So, because for rawhide, you can't braid with it when it's wet. It has to be tempered. And when you hang it out here, Tuck it over this so I can reach my left hand here. <laughs> and you'll want to check on it pretty often because it dries quickly in the sun. And I'll show you when we check on it, it'll, it's tempered when it's uh feels kind of like latigo it'll you can braid with rawhide that's way more dry than you would ever think at first that you could so i can do this one a little bit better than i did my other ones and you also want to make sure children and horses and dogs cannot get to this or else you'll be quite frustrated when you dry this, just try and keep everything flat so it doesn't um, dry kink. <laughs> We're gonna need a much taller girl. Can I, I wanted to show you what it's like to braid with rawhide since it's so much, or I feel that it's so much different than using um, kangaroo or leather. And the first time I did it, I was really, really nervous because I only had so much rawhide and I didn't want to mess it up and um, not get a chance to use more of it and the first thing I ever made 
out of rawhide was a hondu that was about seven times as big as this one. <laughs> and um, I start, and this is all shrunk down because it's not finished and it needs to be stretched. But I started braiding when my rawhide was way too wet. And this is just, remember we were talking before, this feels like um, bendy latigo. And you really, you can, you can work with it very, very dry. It'll just feel weird at first, but just keep experimenting with it and you really can't go too dry. Um, so anyway, here we have our two, this is our four braid. We have our two strings on each side. You're gonna hold your stuff, your strings nice and neatly with your hands underneath. So we have to start with our middle. We cross middle and create our little V and see, oh, this is so much easier to see. Yay! And I remember I pinch it like this and reach under here, go under and over. And this is going to be all flippy because there. Now see how this top string here is higher? So we hold on to my two middle ones, go under and over. And with rawhide, you have to really pull it down to get it to tighten up. You want to make sure that's flat and not twisted. So see, we have our, can you see the pattern there? And I hold it like this, pinch my crosses in the middle. I go under here, reach up and grab my working string, goes behind, under that one, and over, forming our new V. And I hold it there with this hand and then you can Pull it and see how it sucks it down all the way up there. Oh, I think that's awesome. <laughs> so here's our top string. You see how it's higher than everyone else? This one is our working string. So it's going to go under and over, creating our new V. Under. Over. Under. under, over, under, over, under, it's going to twist on me, <laughs> under, You can pull really hard on your rawhide. I mean, if it's super thin, of course, you don't want to. You'll learn how it feels. Under. And see how it pulls down, it tightens up all the way up there? I think that's cool for some reason. Under. And over your middle one. And raw. Under, over, under, over, under, and I kind of use my thumb to brace when I tighten it up. And then I'm going to go ahead because this is getting longer. And this is a new vise. Normally, I will, like last, my old vise, I glued little pieces of, like, uh, latigo in there so it wouldn't hurt. Because normally, you do not want metal touching your rawhide. That is a big no-no. Also, you will not go to heaven if you step on dried rawhide string, just so you know. So thanks for following along with our first uh, Buckaroo Barbie braiding video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, hopefully they will get better. And um, next time I think we'll do uh, learn how to make a Turk's head knot and then we'll do an eight braid and hopefully after that some projects. And if you guys have any questions or ideas just write me and let me know. And 
Uh, we always love to hear from you, and I would have never done this if it hadn't been for several people's insistence after me, so <laughs> thank you very much for the great ideas. Um, I hope you subscribe to our channel and the blog, and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>